Happiness Creatives presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. A hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends. Welcome to yet another installment of MS Creatives. For this Friday, we want to look at the someone titled Signs of the Times. And we'll proceed and dwell on this particular series for the rest of the month of March. And we look at Luke chapter 21. We begin reading at verse number 6 and work our way to verse 8. The King James Version provides as follows. As for these things which you behold, the days will come, in which there shall not be left one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Verse 8. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the times draw near. Go not therefore after them. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a brief moment in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name. Dear Lord, we look forward to your second coming. We are studying the signs and we are reminded that your coming draweth nearer than when we first believed. Be with us, revive us, and remind us of the good that awaits us. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. As our custom is, why don't we raise our usual five points? Jesus has just spoken and he has said, looking upon the splendor of the temple of Jerusalem, he reminds them that there shall come a time when no stone shall be left on another on this magnificent building. Now, this particularly catches the attention of his disciples and they asked him, that's what the Bible says, they asked him, it makes them gain more interest in the things of Christ. May I speak to someone as we reflect upon the old time religion. We live in times when people have a very low balance. Their fuel tanks are running so low in the interest on the things of Christ. We care less what is happening in the realm of Christ. And I want to encourage you as we get to point number one, renew your interest in the things of Christ. When he says something, may his utterances jolt you to life. May they make you inquisitive and inquire after him and say, Lord, what say you? Where do I stand? What should I know? And at point number two, this is the question they asked. When shall these things be? I am reminded of some of the descendants of Israel. They were known as the Issacharites, the sons of Issachar. The Bible says they knew about the times and what the children of Israel ought to do. As Christians of today, we need to know about the times and what the children of man ought to do. We need to ask the question, when shall these things be? We should not go on with business as usual, but we must always want to know the signs and the times so that when we know when these things ought to be, we know what we ought to do. As Christ responds, to the question, when shall these things be and what sign shall we see thereof? He goes on at point number three to give maybe about three signs. At sign number one, he says, do not be deceived. A, by those who come in my name. You know, there are many who come in the name of Jesus Christ nowadays. Many churches with a Jesus prefix or a Jesus suffix. There are many who claim the name of Jesus by profession. They claim the name of Jesus by practice. They claim the name of Jesus by word. And yet, they are not akin to him in any way or form. And Christ says, do not be deceived. There shall be many on your screens who are going to say, Jesus this, Jesus that. And yet, they do not speak for Jesus. They shall say, Jesus said and Jesus did not. And yet they have not been commissioned by Jesus. Listen to the words of God. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. And it be. Do not be deceived even by the impersonators of Jesus. They will not only claim to be emissaries of heaven, 
but they will also claim to be Jesus himself. And the Bible says, when they begin to say, I am Jesus, do not go after them. Do not go after them. And at point number four, I love this, I love this. He goes on to say, there shall come a time when these people are going to say all these things. And remember, they have not been sent by Christ. Number two, they are not Christ themselves, but they are telling you the message is the coming of Christ is nigh or the coming of Christ has arrived. Their sign that we need to take note of is that there shall come a time when the children of Israel and the children of men shall receive the right message from the wrong mouths. When we begin to receive the right message from the wrong mouth, that is another sign. Do not be deceived. There is nothing wrong with the message that says Jesus is coming again. There is nothing wrong with the message that says his coming is near. There is nothing wrong with the message that says, behold, he stands at the knock at the door and knocks. He has arrived. Nothing wrong with that message. But when it comes from the wrong mouth, do not be deceived. That is your greatest message. The message that we have titled this particular discourse as subtitled is the right message and the wrong mouth. There's so many right messages that are coming from the wrong mouths. We want to make sure that when we are receiving these, we know this one thing. Our redemption draweth nigh. The good book says, when you begin to see these things, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And lastly, Christ goes on to say, go not after them. Do not follow them. The call that he makes in the book of John is that my sheep know my voice. And when I call, they follow me. And there are some of them that are out there in other places. When I shall call, they shall hear the master's voice and follow. As for you, my children, do not be following those who impersonate Christ. Do not be following those who speak for Christ and have no relationship with him. Those who speak for Christ and yet have not been commissioned by him. Do not be following such. Your role is to follow Christ. He has called and he is coming again. These are the signs of the times and we want to take note of them as they are coming to us. The greatest sign of the time that we have nowadays, number one, people have no interest in the things of Christ. They are indifferent. They are even proud to tell you, I do not believe in Christ. You people are bigots. You people are narrow-minded who believe in the narrative of Christ. Number one. That's a sign. Number two, when all these things start happen, what shall we do? When we have people who have an interest in what man ought to do and what should happen, then we know this is a sign of the time. We need to have people who are going to study the times. And we also have those who are indifferent as we go through these signs. 3A, do not be deceived by those who speak in his name. Do not be deceived, B, by those who impersonate him. And number four, the greatest sign that you're going to have is when the right message is in the wrong mouths. Make sure you look out for the message that should come from the right mouth and it be correct for you. And lastly, do not go after them. May the good Lord help us as we go out for this weekend. Bless us until we meet again on Monday. May I pray for your safety. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, we go our separate ways until we meet again on Monday. Some of us will be going to church tomorrow and some the day after. How I pray, dear Lord, that you may visit us in our different spaces and show us the signs of the times so that by the knowledge that we shall receive, like the Issacharites, we will know and act. Be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.